Tonight, on Local Light with John Compton, Ben Sten takes John along as he tells the story of his moves from Canada to the U.S. and eventually to France, where he was trained as a chef. Ben gave up the New York chef lifestyle to move to Hood River, where he now finds himself as part owner and executive chef at Salilo Restaurant and Bar. That's all next on Localite. Hey Ben, welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah, let's talk about how you got into this because your sort of path ending up in the gorge was really expansive. I mean, started out back east, ended up overseas in Europe. Um, tell me about that, that, that whole transition and how you ultimately ended up here. Well, uh, I would say, I would, I would have to start out by saying that I didn't set out to cook. I didn't set out for a career in food. I, it's something that I enjoyed with my family as a kid. We would prepare meals together. My dad loves to bake bread. I was thinking about that. Uh, pizza was a special thing that uh, we would do as a group activity. But I kind of fell into it because I was on an academic path. And I, as you were saying, I went to um, the regular school plan, um, New York University in, in New York City. And I thought I was going to law school at that point in time. Oh, really? Yes. Uh, but I wanted to take a break before, uh, you know, after four years of undergrad and then, you know, straight into more schooling. And an opportunity came to me, and it was, um, it was really about uh, French, uh, a little bit of a background, speaking French, doing classes in French in school, and a school opportunity in, at a culinary school in France. So I, I jumped on it because it seemed like, well, this, this, is, this is a one-time situation. I'll go for it and see how it plays out. And um, that was as an, as an intern, an unpaid intern at a... Um, a culinary school in the Burgundy region of France. La Varenne is the name of the school. Oh, all right. So I, I went to work, and my compensation for working at the school was uh, the class series that they offered to their regular students, and I was in a group of uh, six interns who were all working at the school and um, taking classes along the way. And one thing led to another. That was the, the chefs who taught at the school, the the uh, professors, let's say, were also restaurant owners, and they would offer positions to the interns to work in their restaurants for continued training. That would be the externship program, let's say. And so I did that, and I ended up living in France for two years, a wow. year at the school and a year um, working in various restaurants. Is that pretty unique, that a school would have restauranteurs working there that then would take interns into into their restaurants or does that happen here too uh i i think it is unique i think that there are it's it's likely that chefs might teach elective classes at a school and come from a restaurant and maybe they would show off their expertise i think it was a little less so the case that um, this school was designed almost entirely around elective classes in that way and i think that the chefs would come in do run a uh, let's say a two month program, and then another chef would come on board. Okay. But it created a great opportunity for all of the interns because we just we made these great uh, connections to the chefs, and, the, and we were free labor, of course. So they were yeah, so they liked you, and they had already trained us, or they had already, I think, uh, sort of streamlined what they would want from their you know a, a student or somebody coming into their kitchen. And there's a great network. And I think a, a, a respect for uh, the culinary world. So not just um, the kitchen, but also the service aspect of it. Restaurants in European countries um, uh, have professions that are lifelong professions. It's not a job that you take along the way to something else. Mm -hmm. It's the job that you're searching out. And I really appreciated that, and I felt like I got a lot out of it. So. Was that, was that kind of a rude awakening in any sense when you got back to the U.S. and sort of, because, you know, you always hear like, oh, yeah, well, I waited tables while I was going to school or, you know, I was, I went so, you know, wherever it was, kind of happens a lot out here in the gorge, like, I'm coming out to go sailing and I need a job, you know, that sort of a thing. Was that, were you already kind of aware of that or once you got there and then came back, you kind of went, oh, this is different. It, yeah, it, <laughs> it, it, it was different. It's, it, it's, um, it's the latter of those two scenarios for sure. And I think mostly because 
I didn't set out, I wasn't searching for something, I was just discovering as right. it was happening. And when I got back, to, I went back to New York after I finished my schooling in France and then uh, the, you know, my uh, you know, externship working. And then I just pounded the pavement and took a job. And I had a, I had a decent enough resume just from the little bit of experience and it was unique, as you said, to be yeah. working in France. And so I started work uh, right away and then it was a world of people who were working hard and hard hours, some of whom had some background in culinary training like me and other people who just took a, a job um, because they needed a job and learned along the way. And I would say that they were equally skilled. Both uh, backgrounds brought something special to the, to the work experience. Yeah. Now, where was that at? Was that still... In New York City. So this was in New York City. So I worked in New York City for two years when I came back from France. And that's really the, the stepping off point for coming out to the gorge because it, that was a hard life. And that yeah. is, that's just 10 to 12 hour days, uh, six days a week, um, sometimes a lot longer than that. And um, not, not a very healthy uh, life outside of the restaurant. Right. Uh, it's just there's not enough free time. It's, you know, you do laundry and then you just go right back again. And I was tired a lot, and I didn't have energy for to do much else because of, you know I sleep, work late, sleep in, get up, go back to work, go back to work. And so at the time, a buddy of mine, uh, he, he's actually a, an, old, an old friend. We, we grew up down the street from each other and went different directions after school. He went to school in, at uh, UBC uh, in Vancouver, Canada. And he was coming down here. So he was in Hood River in the summers teaching windsurfing and working at the marina at the time where they have rental gear and you know he was he was living the dream and i'd call him on the phone and say i'm in new york city working 80 hours a week and he'd say i'm teaching windsurfing to uh chicks in bikinis and <laughs> having a great time come on out and that's yeah. what he said and so i said okay I, i'll do it i need a change of pace and so i took a break i took a two-week vacation and came out and visited hood river and uh, we drove down the coast and Went surfed here and hung out. First time ever out here. First time ever. Flew into Portland, picked me up in a you know rickety old pickup truck, and gave me you know his Oregon experience, and it was brilliant. It was really an eye opener, and it was the antithesis of the world that I was living in. And so I said, okay, I will come back the next summer and spend a summer and just um, you know give it a go. And so I did that. Packed up with a friend of mine. We drove across country, landed in Hood River, and I passed around my resume, which at this point was culinary school in France, a bunch of hoity-toity restaurants in France, some hoity-toity places in New York, and then <clears throat> here I am. And this was 95, and Hood River was still a small town, and there were a couple of places, and they were all very casual, and that was the restaurant scene. And so I got hired on at Sixth Street Bistro. It had been open two years at that time, and they... They called me Frenchie. <laughs> Frenchie, yeah. Yep. And uh, I worked the grill station, and uh, you know we had served great burgers and salads, and it was a casual job, and it was a it was a great summer. And so you were still just doing this. You were you hadn't moved yet. You were no, just here for the summer. I had an apartment back in yep. New York City that I had, you know, a friend filled in for my spot, and I left most of my things there, and I had a duffel bag, and you know that was it. Yeah. Well, uh, when we come back, I want to hear about what started happening um, and what made you go, you know what, I think Hood River is, I'm ready to leave New York City and, and, and call Hood River home. And then ultimately ending up with a partner in Salila Restaurant. So we'll discuss that and more. We'll be right back. Coming up. New York City is just packed with people and a, and a lot of choices. I think that's what's special about New York is just... There's so many people doing their thing, so many things offered, you really have the world available to you. And Hood River had uh, uh, you know, one pizza place, and I think uh, the Skylight Theater was there at the time, so you could see a movie. Uh -huh. And you know, that was about it. <laughs> 